We have had a doozy of a day. What an excellent day for an exorcism. Welcome to the Horror Basement and Beyond with the Big Bob Buddies, Jim Jam and Johnny. I'm one of your hosts, Johnny, and always, Jim Jam is here with us. Come here. And uh, I would like to thank my friend Trista for my new shirt. She made it for you? Yep, she made it. I made it, dude. He pressed it on there. Yep. Horror. H is for horror. Uh, it's pretty cool. Love it. Uh, we are hope you're having a good, um, as they call it, spooky season. Pretty soft shirt. Yeah. Um, spooky season, as everyone calls it, but it's the third. I think it's the third weekend in the haunt season. Yeah, fourth now that we're talking, or when you hear this. Uh, well, yeah, pretty much. Oh, yeah, fourth. But um, for us and everyone that's probably listening to this, spooky season's all year long. Yes, pretty much because it's Halloween season, but spooky season is all the time. Yeah, with uh the horror movies and everything that goes on. But today, we have, on the Big Bob Buddy Report, some Terrifier 2 news, uh, some Jellyfish, what the fuck? Uh, a Grinch movie's coming out. I know, I, I, look, I know Halloween isn't here yet. Oh, yeah. But don't get mad, because we're going to talk about a Christmas movie. It, it, okay? It goes hand in hand with Terrifier, yes. Yes. and you'll hear why in a few. Yes, uh... There's, uh, we're going to go break down the eight signs that you could be leaving, uh, eight danger signs of evil spirits in your house. We're going to break that down. Uh, there's a, there's a serial, uh, tree cutter downer. <laughs> tree serial killer. Yeah. Tree cutter downer. <laughs> yeah. Serial reminds, tree killer. That reminds me, uh. You don't need to be doing that because then you. Can, oh, they you caught know. the serial killer in California. Just so you know. Oh well. If you didn't know, there was a serial killer in California. Yeah. They caught him. Apparently, though, if you would, if you you continue to kill trees, trees will get their revenge. Yeah, tree revenge is what they call it. Yeah, you should check it out. That's another you. Christmas Thanks. movie. Didn't we Song do, uh, didn't yes, we, yeah, we, we did a commentary. That. Uh, also. We're just going to be up front with this. Halloween Ends is out. It's been out for a week. We will spoil the shit out of it. We are going to do a movie of the week breakdown of Halloween Ends. And if you know how we do that, yeah, it's going to be totally ruined for you. It was totally ruined for me anyways. By two people before I got to watch the movie. You fucking assholes. Uh, yeah, fucking... I, you would yeah. think that... Um, one person that ruined it, uh, what didn't ruin it, but yeah, spoiled a lot of it for me by uh, one sentence. Would have known that I hadn't watched it because I told him. I remember that, after I said it, he listened to it, and I was like, "Fifteen yeah. seconds." No, I didn't listen to all of it. I stopped. I stopped it because we do voice messaging and uh, messenger. We don't do text and like. All the time, most of our messages are through voice, so it's easier just to send a message that way. Yeah, because a lot of times we're at work, <laughs> but we're working hard and we're talking to each other. Yeah, but yeah, uh, I had to work on a Saturday, and he's like, "Yeah, man," and something, 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 and da da da. And I'm like, I stopped. It. I said, "I haven't watched the fucking movie yet." <laughs> So I'm giving you a warning to go watch the movie. Yes. Because at the end of this, like you can listen for the next 40 minutes or so, maybe 30. Depending. It's going to be a breakdown. We're going to break it down. Maybe it might be a breakdown. I don't know. Yeah. But even the friend that I was watching it with the whole time was talking about the movie. I'm just like, I already know. And I couldn't tell her. I was like, yeah, I don't know. That's all I had to say to her. But she was asking questions. And I couldn't answer them. So. Yeah, there's that. 
You're supposed to go to the theater and watch it, right? Yeah, I was going to go to the theater and watch it, um, but and we, I've discussed this before. I discussed this last year with Halloween Kills. Um, NBC, the whatever studio that releases is it Universal? Universal, yeah. Universal and Blumhouse, but Universal, they control it. Released it on Peacock alongside the movie release, and um, it actually came out Thursday night. And here, uh, the headlines, and, and I found this last night. We'll we'll go ahead and discuss a little bit of why they probably shouldn't release movies the same day, but. The freaky director, I don't, Christopher Landon, is calling out the studio for the same day release because Halloween Ends made forty three million. Like they claim that it's probably going to make fifty five million by the end of the weekend. Substantially hurts the numbers for it. You know it does. Oh yeah. But it don't hurt the numbers for Peacock. See, and that's the thing, Universal. Don't care about your movie, movie because the subscribers to Peacock, they're getting money off that, and not having probably not having to pay for the create. You know what I'm saying? Like if if you had they don't pay per view, probably no. But I'm saying if somebody pays seven eight dollars, whatever Peacock is, uh, it's not that it's five bucks. It's yeah, it's five bucks, and it didn't have uh, commercials in it, but um. <laughs> Like, because you know, some people have it written in on the back end of their contract, whatever it brings at the box office, yeah. and they get a percentage of the box office money. Well, they don't give a shit about that because that's probably not written in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it'd be harder to track who would subscribe just to watch that movie. Um, I said that last year. It still did good last year. Uh, so, I don't know. Uh, I think it's bad for movies, it's not bad for the fans of movies. You know, because I did get to go watch it conveniently. So, so the premium is four ninety nine. That says no ads. I must have premium plus because it's nine ninety nine for that one. Yeah, there was no bucks. ads when you watched. No, it. Okay. well, there's one at the very beginning for thirty seconds. I wonder what that's it. I don't know. Uh, but and and you know that it room it it it's good for fans if they can't get out to a theater. Like I, I could have. But I worked all night. Like a rural and they got a theater close. Yeah, because I worked ten hours, and then you know by the time you get home, somebody and, gonna have a fat ass check next and week. eat. It'll be all right, and eat and all that. Uh, it's like damn, do I, you know you got one more day left before you have to go back to work? It's a little bit different than having two days off. Two, if you gotta get up and piss, you can pause it. Yeah, and. For me personally, I like going to matinees. I don't like going to nighttime movies. I've said this multiple, multiple, multiple times. Y'all are probably sick of me saying it. I just don't like the crowds at night. Yeah. It's a totally different group. You know, like older people that are there to watch a movie go during a matinee because they're all there to focus on a movie. And nighttime, it's a little bit younger and people are, you know, a little bit more talkative, a little bit looser. More assholes. Yeah, well, I mean, they're out trying to have a good night. Yeah. I'm <laughs> during the middle of the day. I'm out trying to watch a fucking movie. Plus, I didn't get. To, I was only really wanting to go because I could take a date to the movie theater and give them a free popcorn and a free drink that I got for my birthday because I don't buy popcorns and drink. But I I could have taken them on a full date. <laughs> oh. It'd have been free. <laughs> Cheap bastard. Well, I would have paid for their ticket. That's ten bucks. Eleven bucks. <laughs> <laughs> but I would have had a cheap date, and then and then at Regal, I'm pretty sure you can go up and be like, "Can I just go ahead and get my refill for my soda now, so I don't have to come back?" And then now because of COVID, they got to throw the cup away, so they'll just give you like a whole nother new cup, so you have two free drinks. If you, ever, you already did that before, no, I seen someone do it where they go and get a large. If you order a large drink, you get a free refill. Well. The guy behind the counter was just like, hey, uh, do you get a free refill? And I can just go ahead and give it to you now. And then that saves you from buying another drink. Hack. Life hack, guys. Don't. Yeah, just go to Regal and be like, hey, I want to. Regal's going to be like, our has gone. Uh, we can just refill the same cup. Uh, uh, they can't still. 
I don't. I'm just saying they'll probably find a way. Of what but if you go, once they find out, people, you can go to the theater inside and come back out, maybe. But I don't know if you have to bring your cup back with you. But I would just, I mean, come on, bring the receipt and be like, hey, I should have a refill on this. You tell them you just say, hey, I, I dropped my cup in the floor. I'm not. Gonna I threw it away. Yeah, so I threw it away because I was not going to drink it. Out but of in, in all honesty, though, if you just be straight up with them and just go up there and be like, hey, don't this come with the refill? Can I just go ahead and get my refill so I don't have to get up? And then you have two drinks. Yeah. And then you can. I don't see why. It's the same price. I mean, see how they have a problem with it because hell, they don't own the fucking reel. You, you know what I'm saying? They don't own that. They're just getting paid to work there. How much is that cup, really? Yeah. Well, you pay for the extra cup. You're just not paying for a new one. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, I, it's a, it's a possibility that you could get one. I don't know about popcorn. It's always worth a try. Oh. Yeah, it's fucking... If you're not scared to ask, it's always worth a try. Because imagine you go with Ashton. And you go buy a large drink. And you just say, hey, does the large drink come with the refill? Can I just go ahead and get my second refill now so I don't have to get back up yeah. during the middle of the movie? They'd probably be like, yeah, sure. And then do you just fucking hand it off and go? Why wouldn't they? That's true. Because times have changed. But yeah. Anyways, life hack. I don't, sorry, got off track on that. Don't really matter, I guess. I don't know why I'm apologizing. Uh, don't forget, uh, it is Witch Month on uh, Tingler. Yep. And we don't have any witches for you. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to, and also for Tingler, if you're missing, um, uh, oh my God, I'm just blanked. Like, uh, real bad. Yeah. If, uh, is it old TV show? Uh, uh, yeah. black and white, and it and it had, and it, <laughs> come on, man. I don't know. Remember, remember, help me out here. Okay, we're we're on this journey together now. All of us, <laughs> we're on this journey together. It's an old black and white show, and it had like a little spirally thing at the beginning of it. And Twilight, it got, Zone. Twilight Zone. Holy shit. We'll be on Tingler in December, so if you're missing it on Netflix, it's because Tingler has the first 48 episodes that they're going to be able to show. So, so they got yeah. exclusive rights to it? I guess they bought the rights to it. From what we heard in our meeting, um, if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong, but I'm, I heard it in the meeting that we had, the producer's meeting. Um, so I wasn't able to be in there. So uh, for that, if you're missing the Twilight Zone on Netflix, in December, come to Tingler, watch the programming on there. They got a lot of good, good, great programming. Not biased at all, but at 9 p.m. on Saturday nights, it, it's the best ever. Sean, you should. But if you're already listening to this, then I guess you don't. Saturday nights, you should uh, probably promote that because right right now, anyways, because I'm not home. Yeah, I don't care. That's that's your choice. Your life choice, bud. No, no, you should promote the show though, for us. Yeah, like I said, that's your life choice. I know it's my life choice, but you should at least, you know, at least yeah, throw, I, your, I, throw on your Facebook, like, hey, uh, the whore base was on Tingler. We agreed in this relationship. You could at least do that. Buddy. We agreed. You should do one more weekend, though, so. I'm just kidding. I'm, uh, I probably should do that, but I'm horrible at promoting this show. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be like, yeah, yeah. Hey, I need to get a banner from you, by the way. Carol's wanting me to bring a banner so we can hang up out there. So I'm thinking the Tennessee Horror News, the one we don't the use. The old one? one? Yeah. Just fold it. Where's the small one? You had, you had a gorgeous one? No, I got the smaller new one. Oh. Anyways, that's not... We? Yeah. We the... have enough. Yeah, we can just do that one. I think yeah. you have that, too. I don't have it here. Maybe we should look at it. Um, maybe we should talk about this after. Behind the scenes stuff, y'all. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway. And speaking of Halloween Hollow, if you're in the Middle Tennessee area, go. It'll be the last weekend you're able to go. Yeah. Because it'll be Halloween weekend after you hear this. The next weekend up is Halloween weekend. You go, 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 go. Uh, a fun time, and it's family friendly. So speak. Black cats and goblins and night walker ghosts. 
How those spell witches is what we fear most. You may think they scare me, you're probably right. Black cats and goblins on Halloween night. Trick or treat! <laughs> Like we were saying, um, last week, if you're in the Middle Tennessee area, definitely go and check out Halloween Hollow. Also, Slaughterhouse. Yes. Stacy's uh, Dixon's Haunt. I went last Sunday. Was it last Sunday? I think it was. Two Sundays ago when you hear this. Yeah. So, uh, they've changed it up once again. A phenomenal. Last uh, weekend to go. Yep. I think they're, yeah, they probably... Yeah, because uh, when you hear this, it'll be coming up on Halloween, right? Yep, week weekend before Halloween weekend. Uh, but hey, if you're in the Manchester area for Halloween, we'll go ahead and promote this before we go move on to the next topic. Uh, Tennessee Horror News and the Horror Basement and Gorgeous Ghouls presents Texas Chainsaw Massacre Yard Hunt. Uh, bum, bum, bum. I'm working on it for several weeks now. Got to add some more plastic to it. Start decorating inside, and it's gonna it's gonna be a bloody good time. If you're a fan of the um, original movie, and you'll well, or just the series alone, because of course we got masks from the remake with Jessica Biel. Because I bought it when uh, that first came out, and I've had it ever since. But still. Gonna have a chainsaw. Everybody loves chainsaws, right? Not everybody. So, Sorry, even I'm better. To find I want to see people running out of my yard hunt. Right? Yes. I hope they don't. Yes. So, yeah, we definitely need to get those banners. Because that night I'm going to hang them up on the front of it. And I got to get a poster. And I got to put on there. Get Amy or someone to draw on there. Like, uh, warning. You know, gore. Because there will be gore. It's not going to be... Ti- There's going to be body parts. Yeah, so... I wouldn't say gore. Is that gore? Yeah, it's going to be blood in there. I want to have a... I'm trying to find an old deep freezer that I can just fill up with something and then put some body parts in there and then pour some blood all over it. Yeah. That sounds like a mess to clean up. I'm just going to throw the deep freezer away after. Oh. So I won't clean it up. Sit it out by the ditch. Yeah, so if you got a deep freezer and while you're listening to this and can bring it to Manchester. That would be phenomenal. Yeah, just like a small one, not like a big one. Yeah, just need one of those chest type ones. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, speaking of, uh, I don't know, but something. There's a 70 foot tentacle jellyfish out there, right? Yes, uh, so the pink mini, I guess in the Gulf Coast. I haven't heard of this. Look, but... we go there sometimes. I don't know about that show. And that thing is... Was found in the in Gulf Coast in 2000 and it was registered as an entirely new species in 2011. They're carnivorous and have 70 feet long tentacles, um, weigh up to 50 pounds. And I guess in the Gulf Coast area, people are being warned to watch your step, watch out. 50 pounds, huh? Oh. I wish there was someone to like compare, like put your foot right here, see how. What? Jesus, them are wild looking. They're wild looking. Uh, I was looking for 
I couldn't find it. That's why I was sorry. I was on. If you watch the video, you could see me on my phone looking. It's not. I wasn't trying to ignore Jim Jam, but they caught like a damn. I wish I could remember a sunfish, and it's like the largest ever sunfish recorded, and oh, I them, couldn't. Them things get fucking massive. Or the largest ever bonefish uh, recorded. And, yeah, there it is. A uh, 6,000-pound giant sunfish found dead in the Azores is the heaviest bony fish ever recorded. So, that thing... Look so at it. No one caught it. No, yeah, no one caught it. It was just found dead. But they're called sunfish because they come up from the depths of the ocean to sunbathe the top of the water. And they scientists think that they do that because uh they absorb the heat before they go back down to hunt for for whatever they eat down at the depths of the ocean. They're massive. I just thought that was cool, like in reference to the tentacles. Oh, pink meanies, man. Sounds terrible. Look at that thing. The pink meanie. It's a big old blob, man. It? Yeah. I wonder if that's what the blob was created after. Pink mean no, because uh, they didn't come out till. Uh, no, I'm talking about jellyfish. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. You fucked me up there. Yeah, I did. That was my fault. Uh, so, in Portland, Oregon, uh, authorities in Gresham, a suburb of Portland, Oregon, are trying to catch an infamous Gresham lumberjack. Ooh, man, that's. Um, this person is suspected to have cut down to around 700 trees in the area for no reason. Wow. You've been sourcing Good. thousands of photos of a forest in Gresham, looking for clues that could help him identify and finally catch the Gresham lumberjack. So, uh, is he just cutting them down and leaving them? The elusive tree serial killer has been felling trees for over a year now and seems to be getting bolder. Unfortunately, so far, all they know is that culprit seems to prefer trees along a segment of the trail between the 7th Street Bridge and Toll Avenue. Mm -hmm. And cutting them with a handsaw or a bow saw. So he's out there quietly. Wow. We found a lot of blades that have been pinched in the actual wood itself and saw. Individual uh, just has more blades on hand, so they just keep cutting. Hmm. Wow. It's a yeah. lot of effort. For what, for what though? I don't know, because it says a, a lot of times a bow saw can get through this, like, and I guess the picture that they're showing, a tree in five to ten minutes, and it's pretty quick because they're super sharp blades. Hmm. So, this is somebody that comes in quick, but the individual individuals also spending hours in the field cutting these trees. I don't understand why you would want to waste your time unless you just want the attention of it. But you're not letting yourself know. So. But I guess you're still kind of getting attention, but only he knows the attention because he knows who he is. And, and get, yeah, and here's, a, here's another. Uh, not only is he being uh, destroyed, you know, hundreds of trees, but also untold numbers of tr shrubs and bushes which equate to hundreds of thousands of dollars in damage. How do you put a money bag? I don't know. That's a good question. I guess the replanting and the taking out of the trees, but if it's in a forest, you just kind of got to let it, the tree sit. Because if a tree falls over in a forest, then like usually in a, they don't... Does that mean that's some money? The wildlife organization don't mess with it. Uh, I don't... I, I, I don't know. Uh, for if it was your bush, yeah, it'd be a loss of money. That's why he's just coming by cutting your bushes down. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but it's just like, no, but them grow naturally, so how would you put a, would you put a value with like what that's similar to in a store? I think it's more probably resources that they're having to use. But I don't know, like, I guess a tree has value of some sort, but if you cut down hundreds of them... Of course it has a, uh, what is the word? Has a uh, a priceless value because they do produce oxygen, right? Yeah. 
So if, they, if this dude was to continue to cut shit down, there's a possibility we get a flow on air, right? I mean, I don't think so. I think so. Uh, let's move into Terrifier before we... Uh, Do we want to talk about the box office first? Yeah, uh, so Terrifier... I'm pretty sure, though, now... Um, it came out last week that it had a pocket 1.2 at the box office. Uh, and people like comment that uh like on the thing that you sent yeah box office gross in canada is 1.6 gross worldwide is 1.75 for terrifier 2 so 1.7 million dollars is what it's gross and a lot of people are like oh wow that's not a lot you know uh uh halloween for it's going to do 55 million it's an independent movie yeah, so I mean, it grew from a thirty-five thousand dollar budget in two thousand sixteen, and it was crowdfunded. So I don't know what their budget. And this budget this year was two hundred fifty thousand. Is what that people were have? is what people were stating. Uh, yeah, budget two hundred fifty thousand is what's been stated. Whether or not that's true, I don't know. So he he won't be getting the money for that unless uh, they want. If they do a three, then this mo- uh, bloody disgusting. Well, I I would hope that. Uh, they would at least give him a meal. Well, I'd hope that uh, Damien or whoever had it written in the back end of a contract. Like, I get 1% of whatever, or 5% of whatever sells at the box office. Yeah. I mean, he deserves it. That way he can continue making movies, but apparently he's already got, like, enough shot for three to four movies, for three and four, which don't make sense because then you'd have to have a storyline you're just wedging it into. I haven't got to see Terrifier 2. Um, but like I said, the uh, second run is even further out because it's not in Murfreesboro. Yeah, uh, it'll be on Screenbox eventually. Yeah, but sometime I don't know when. Uh, you, if you're looking right here, uh, you can pre-order the Terrifier Two Blu-ray from Walmart exclusive, which I did and uh. And it said July first, twenty forty nine. So, hey y'all, I'm about, I'm getting that Blu Ray soon. Uh, oh, yeah, twenty forty nine. Good God! Over twenty years from now, I have the second one. Bloody disgusting! Fourth one will be out. Way, but anyways, uh, Johnny found on Amazon though. He found a uh, a collector's edition of uh, Terrifier two for what twenty six ninety nine. Yes, and it don't have a picture. It don't have anything. So, I ordered out of curiosity. But the thing is, on Amazon, right. they don't pull the money until it ships. And if you don't like it, you can return it. So, we'll see what that is. Yes, and if you want to watch Terrifier, the first one, uh, it's on Screenbox. Yeah. The first one is on there right now. Uh, and the two will be exclusively to Screenbox soon. It don't have a date yet. Um, so, just for Screenbox, just, this isn't an ad. We don't, but um, $4.99 a month, uh, three months for $11.99, or a whole year for 40 bucks. You know, so, I, was, uh, having I haven't on been Screenbox. on Screenbox, so. Um, ben Dixon was telling me that, uh, I don't know if Death Proof on, not Death Proof, Death, uh, what is Death, Breed? Death Breed is on Screenbox. Oh, that's cool. Or if it was Good Habits Die Hard, one of the others. But uh, the guy that does a full moon tattoo and horror festival, Ben Dixon, some of his movies, Bloody Moon Films or something like that. Full Moon, I, bo- I can't remember the name of this company, but yeah. Uh, that, I just want to throw that out there. But I'm pretty excited about this uh, still book. I'm excited to see the movie. I heard it's a gory good time right yes yeah it's like super gory and uh speaking of terrifier and this goes along with it um the grinch like we we had discussed will be out the mean one is what it's called yeah will be out not a uh, december 15th the ma- if that's a picture from the movie right here that looks phenomenal and 
David Howard Thornton, really nice guy, who plays Art the Clown, will be playing the Grinch. Now he's going to have to do a, a, a Easter movie after this. He's a, a, a kind of a Halloween kind of movie. Now a Christmas movie. Why can't he be a buddy? Oh, shit. I need some good Easter freaking horror movies. I mean, if, don't get me wrong, Critters 2 is really good. Since, you know, Critters 2. Terrifier is, that an is blown up now, it's harder to get a hold of Damon and uh, David. So maybe one day we can have them back on and talk to them. I would like to talk to him. Like, I would like to watch the, the meme one and talk to David. Yeah. Just about what... Because I'm if he does a lot of talking in that in this movie, you know what I'm saying? And he, then he should, yeah. Because he was an actual voice actor, he or he did, is. Did he a, do Joker? Yeah, he's a voice actor. So then he went to being a mom, and just and we discussed that with him. So this, like, you know, just uh, he's a he's a good dude. So I can't wait to see a trailer. I hope a trailer shows a little bit of him. Yeah, and it's supposed to be, I believe, December fifteenth. If I read that correctly, I can't. I'm trying to get us a screen, Johnny. Yeah, I'd love to watch it. Uh, I contacted the distribution company. So. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, to see a really good R-rated, you know what I'm saying, gruesome Grinch movie. Dude, that's gonna be, Maybe it's R-rated. It, it don't really say. XYZ Films. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to... Uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to it. Uh, congrats. Good for... Uh, David, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely good. I don't Man. think he's having to wait tables no more. What do you think? Oh, I think he's. Making, I really don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't think know. I think he's probably making a pretty good amount of money off of conventions now. He, I hope so. And he does in costume. Uh, I mean, I hope he's getting paid. I mean, uh, art is a horror icon in the. Uh, is an icon in the horror community. And I have had people. Because. With it being put in theaters alone, because Terrifier, the first one, with it not getting a big release, no one's heard of Art the Clown. Or not no one, but if you're not really in the horror community, you don't know who Art the Clown is. But with it getting released to a theater, people are kind of like, who's Art the Clown? They're, they've asked me. They, so they go and probably who, seen the second one and hadn't even seen the first one. Yet. Yeah, like they're like, Terrifier, what's this Terrifier? It's like, oh, Art the Clown. Yeah, um... It's gory. Very. It's not for everyone, I think. Because uh, someone was like, yeah, I've seen Terrifiers making people throw up and scream. And it's like, what? amazing fucking um, uh, press. Cause... And it's like, yeah, because it's not for everyone. Like, it's super gory. Like, it's not your average. And it hangs on the gore in the second Yes, track. exactly. Exactly. Uh, so let's move on. Uh to do yeah uh to these guys and we going to show you some southern hospitality i'm craig and i'm adam and we're the holler kings off the charts crazy and and then put some fucking dongs in the movie almost like a slasher villain or something y'all come back now you hear oh <laughs> Playing into those stereotypes. <laughs> I love it. Thank you for listening. Oh, uh, the Holler Kings. We want to, it's, we're not doing a witch theme, so we're going to pass it on to them if you would like to listen to a witch theme. Uh, some a couple They're podcasts doing a series of the bell witch so they did the american haunting the 2000 film 2005 film the american haunting based on the bell witch fucking garbage uh i haven't watched the movie uh and then now here's another podcast uh adam and craig continue their bell witch cinematic journey with 2013's the the bell witch haunting guess what Johnny? another garbage ass movie and the kings also speculate on bell witch theories so if you want so, some witch in your life, go listen to Holler Kings. Yeah, I'll break it down. Listen to them talk about it because the uh, Bell Witch is not far from us. It's in Adams, Tennessee, so it's a Tennessee uh, lure. Lore. Lure, say. But uh, I wish someone would do it, do a movie, and do it justice. 
so I don't know how you can do it justice for that movie when it the story just kind of meh. You know what I mean? Yeah, because though I'm not gonna get into. It. I just wanna say this: the uh, what's the what is it the one the first one the American Honey? Yeah, uh, it plays on the the Bell Witch. It's really the innocence of his daughter because he molested her or something. Hmm. Well, yeah, that has nothing to do with the actual Bell Witch story. So people are pretty pissed about that. So anyways, as Johnny munches down... Yeah, on, you need to get some of these corn brats. They're really good from El Salvador. Go check out our uh, TikTok and you can see the review of those. Yes, definitely. We're going to try them with cereal or milk. Mm, that's a good idea. Um, so, we're going to answer your questions. Are, are you haunted? You have eight... These are eight dangerous signs of evil spirits in your house. So what's number one, John? Number one, the appearance of a smell. It says in the apartment, but in your house. Not your dog farting. Did you say that? No, I'm just saying. Uh, oh. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, guest smell of sulfur and rotten eggs. I couldn't smell none of that around here, so I don't guess. I don't know, man. Your shit stinks pretty bad. Poop? Yeah, your farts. No, I mean, I'm talking about like oh. here, like in my house. I haven't smelled so for rotten eggs. So, I guess that's it. Oh, and others, metal or rust. You smell metal or rust, Johnny? Um, I'll just say this. If you smell copper, you're probably having like a heart attack or something. Oh, so you don't want to smell that if you do. Or, there's some sort of like if you smell copper. Something's wrong. Um, yeah. What is it if you smell outdoors that, what's the smell that it's a copperhead clothes? Never heard anything. Yeah, uh, the smell of it, but. So. And then, um, number two, a repulsive atmosphere, people. Yes. Second factor that may hint at an unpleasant neighborhood with an otherworldly creature or evil spirit. I think it's cucumbers. Sorry. I just remembered. If you smell cucumbers, it's a cotton mouth close by or something like that. Anyways. So is a sudden change in atmosphere. So if you felt cozy and comfortable and the sensation dramatically uh, changes to you being repulsed, it's probably an evil spirit. Strange noises and sounds. That's typical. Yeah. Um, you have an idea. Yeah. yeah. Who did this good? Oh. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I haven't experienced uh, noise, strange no. noises and sounds. Why do they say noises and sounds? Isn't that the same shit? Yeah, so the main evidence is evil spirits, poltergeist. Ooh, yeah, noise and a sound. That's I mean, the same, same thing. I mean, uh, so you want uh, 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 a sound is music? So would a noise be like someone talking, and then a sound would be like something falling on the floor, or yeah. would that be vice versa? I don't know, but that's yeah. Whispers, voices, or the shuffling of invisible. Whoever wrote this feet and common examples of evil spirits. Uh, why they gotta be evil, man? Why why are you labeling these spirits, bro, ma'am? I mean, you, not all of them have to be evil. I don't want to say they or him, them. They, them, sir. Uh, so strange dreams. I have those. So does that mean that I have? Oh, you got sleep apnea. That's your problem. I have dreams because I have sleep apnea. Because you're dying. Why are you trying to sleep? I got a machine for that. Okay, it keeps me alive. He's like, <laughs> not no more because I got something forcing just the air down my throat. I'm just kidding. That doesn't... Feeling cold? Um, come on, man. Oh. So if you have strange dreams, apparently uh, your <laughs> neighbor from the underworld. What's say you look a silhouette or of strangers? Shadow figures. Yeah, shadow figures. Uh, I don't know about strange dreams. If you take melatonin, you might have strange dreams, anyways. Uh, Just smoke some weed. Go sleep. You might have strange dreams from smoking weed. You might eat something and have a strange dream. But apparently now you're fucking being haunted. Uh. So, if you're feeling cold, 
Um, gray is cold. Is it cause? This is a typical one though. In that they say that like if the air gets real cold, all of a sudden it's usually a spirit is around you or something. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna tell you this. Spirits wouldn't like it in my house during winter time. Already cold. Yeah, because it's cold. They like cold though, apparently. Well, I don't know, but they didn't change the air pressure, so they might not like it. Hmm. Well, um, maybe it'll get even colder. And you'll be sitting there and all of a sudden just like, oh, it's cold. Boss or movement of things, uh, pranksters, brownies, sometimes hide things. Or you could just have a jerk of a person mm-hmm. that moves stuff. When you said jerk, I was like, um, person, uh, one, of the, one of them jerking off on you. Alzheimer's. Uh, huh? I mean, if you forget where stuff you're misplacing stuff, you're not necessarily haunting. I was trying to reference Seaman Dean, buddy. God. I know what she's referencing. Well, Withering uh, house plants. Yeah, so you might want to just water them. I don't know. Well, it's because you probably don't have the green thumb, as they say. Yeah. So your plants are dying. Now, if you have weeds. Maybe that's people are always just fucking uh, haunted. And they can't grow stuff. That's good. Good point. Or good. So try to grow our weed. See what happens. Grow a weed or grow yes, weed? Yes, a weed. Grow weed. Unexplained pet behavior? No. Then you can have awesome there. dreams. Not in the state of Tennessee. Um, unexplained pet behavior? Um, so maybe My dog barks behavior. for no reason. Does that mean he sees a ghost? No, I think it's just the type of dog he is. He might hear something outside. Hmm. But Or, or yeah, yes, definitely. You're haunted. You're definitely haunted by your past failures. <laughs> like we all are. I'm not haunted by that. No. I don't even worry. But you know what's not a failure? Not at all. Not at all. Successful toy store. An amazing place to go. And they have a cafe now, right? Beside yes. Them. So. Are you in need of horror collectibles and memorabilia? Look no further than Nightmare Toys. You can find them online at NightmareToys.com and on all social media at Nightmare Toys, the official store of THN News and the Horror Basement Podcast. Check them out. So if you're ever in the Vegas area, make sure you go check out Nightmare Toys. Oh yeah, they have celebrity signings periodically, and just a lot of cool stuff. And go eat at the cafe. Our good friend Felissa Rose has been there multiple times. Yes, multiple times. So, Johnny, are you ready for? Did I send you that TikTok of that dude putting the sign up in the window at Spirit Halloween and fucked up? Yeah. Oh, Halloween. 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 So, so I've been telling everybody to say, "Hey, I hope y'all have a happy Halloween." Yes. No one knows what the fuck I'm talking about. No. I think I'm retarded, probably. Uh, <clears throat> mentally challenged. My bad. I didn't mean to say Mentally disabled. Word. I did not mean to say the R word. I apologize. What you are, technically. Just because I got a special edge. That, see, I can say the R word because I'm a part of the community. Yeah, he's a part of the SPED I got community. A, I got a special education diploma. Yeah, SPED diploma. I might say a lot. Um, So, movie of the week. Ooh, it is back. Movie of the month, I guess we should call it. The infamous Halloween ends. It's finally here. Um, this one takes four, takes the uh, stage or... Guess what, y'all? They kill Michael. Thanks for watching. I'm just joking. Uh, <clears throat> spoiler alert. Yeah, <laughs> uh, definitely go... Well, I mean, it says ends. Come on. Uh, definitely... Go watch the movie if you haven't watched this. It's, it's going to get ruined. Yes, it's on Peacock. It's easy. I mean, they put it on streaming, so therefore there's probably a good bootleg copy. This is why I say, remember, if you release it during streaming, people are going to bootleg it. And, they and then it'll be a hundred copy. And it'll be a fantastic copy. This is why they shouldn't release it during streaming while it's in theaters. Just my opinion. Because you watched it legally. Because Whatever. you cannot find the Terrifier 2 copy right now. I don't know. We don't know. Technically, we don't know that. I look. <laughs> it ain't illegal to look. What? We're not going to be able to watch it because it's not anywhere around here. No. So they should have released it. Do better. No. Bloody it's disgusting. Good. Yes. And I, want, and I won't have to fucking try to bootleg it. 
Send a dime, do better. I'm not driving to fucking Nashville for a two hour and twenty movie. And no, no. I'm gonna I'm watch that. Nashville for any movie, just about. I did it for Top Gun, but I went because it was dude. Well, that's 40x, just totally different. Anyways, it was super. We're eight. getting off. I didn't track. Think We're getting off track here. We're getting. I think off. Halloween ends would have been cool in Super X. I don't see where it would have been. No. Forty <laughs> X then. No. If that tells you anything about the no. So the saga of Michael Myers and Lori Crows come to a spine chilling climax in this final installment of this trilogy. Uh that tells you right there what happens. This is four years after the uh kills, Halloween kills. So uh this movie starts out with it opens up with uh a guy super weird. Um because he's oh, yeah. babysitting this boy and he's odd, but like they're watching horror movies, and the boy just snaps on him and is like, "I don't need to be best friends with some loser boy babysitter." So when, why did the kid all of a sudden become a bully? I, I don't know. Did the horror movie turn him into a bully. He had said something about I don't know what he said exactly. Uh, did he reference Michael? I don't think so. It just. I think he did. But uh. And then uh, the kid, he, the guy gets up and goes to the kitchen to get some chocolate milk. I don't know. He likes chocolate milk, if you notice. Yeah. Uh, that's later on in the movie, too. And he's going to cut him some bread that they just so happen to have laying out. A moist dessert bread. The bread, nah. Moist? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't like a regular bread. You know what I'm saying? It was yeah. more like a dessert bread. It's around Halloween. Maybe I don't know what kind of bread it was. You would like to know what kind of bread that was. It was brown. You know, Shit bread. was it chocolate bread? Some sort of chocolate bread. Anyways, if anybody knows, if you're a bread connoisseur and you know, let us know. Uh, inquiring minds would like to know. Yes, as uh, Corey Hames said on the Lost Boys. Remember that? Yep. No, in the bathtub. Anyways. Prior to the bathroom. Anyways, it don't matter. I'm getting off track again. So, the boy, and then, so he, the kid knocks over a lamp, which is, they're trying to set up the spooky feel like Michael Myers is around, and opens the front door, and the guy goes, looks outside, and goes up to the room and looks for the kid, and then the kid's smart enough and devious enough to go to the attic and be like, Oh, yeah. But after the fact, before that, the guy walked through the kitchen and noticed the knife was gone. But you know it's not Michael Myers because it's a fucking bread knife. Yeah, Michael only likes a big butcher knife. Exactly. Yeah. So then uh, they go up. He goes upstairs, and the kid, this this devious kid, um, he's really devious. This kid. Yes. Yeah, he puts the bread knife on one of the steps. Some- but he puts the bread knife on one of the steps. So, like, you know, Michael Myers stuff. And uh, then, then the guy walks into the attics and I'm like, what's the kid's name? I don't even know the kid's name. Um, don't matter. Uh, yeah, so... They don't make it through 30 minutes of the movie. So the little kid is like... Uh, 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 Jeremy is like... Uh, and he's like, Jeremy. And he's all whispering, and I don't know why he's whispering. So I guess he thinks Michael Myers is there, or somebody's no, like... Oh, he's whispering to the horror movie. Yeah, okay, you're right, you're right. <laughs> you're, you're right. Uh, I didn't think about that. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was just like... And then, um... The kid locks him in the attic, which would be... This would be a horrible fucking attic to have, or like space... Why does it lock on the outside, but not the... And you can't unlock it on the inside? Probably one of the old ones has a key. Well, no, I, ha- I thought it had a lock. But anyway, it's like... Who are you fucking keeping in there? Your parents are down there. Yeah, that's like flowers in the attic shit, bro. Yeah, they're serial killers. You ever watch that movie? That's a fucked up movie. Fucking serial killer, bro. And, uh... So... The parents, of course, arrive while he's like... Let me out of here. Let me out. So I guess it had been hours and hours had passed... Because the parents went to a costume party. 
he's kicking the door and right as the parents walk in the door kicks it open and the kid's standing right in front of the door and he falls like what is it two three stories down in this massive house right in front of the parents and he's killed and then the guy's holding the knife looking over the banister after they heard him say I'm gonna kill you and the door opens in him it's crazy that they can hear him behind the door saying, I can kill, I, I'm going to kill you. Three stories up. Far up. Yeah. And, uh, they, yeah. You know, what, you know how they heard it? They watched the playback. <laughs> the kids. I don't know. What? This movie don't make no fucking sense anyway, so. Yeah, uh. They say that they watched the playback of uh, the scene, and that's how they knew. I mean, I, maybe happened. you could hear him that high up yelling. I guess he's yelling real loud, but. So that's how it opens. Little bastard got what he deserved for fucking with people. Yeah. But, uh, hey, what does that say? You uh, you play stupid games, you get stupid prizes. Yeah. And he got it. And so now this guy's labeled as a kid killer, the babysitter killer. And then it goes into a monologue from Jamie Lee Curtis of all the previous films. They fucking do a recap. Of like all the films, know. how they got to this point, and I'm just like, like you didn't know, you it's been out since '78. Or is it '78? Yeah, and they go back to that one. They go back to that one, and then show the parts of the new one. I'm just like, I don't, I don't need a fucking recap in this movie, guys. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just don't. Why am I getting a recap in in a movie that I? WWE must have it. I, it's like filling time. You know what I'm saying? Fluff. And, and she breaks down. Oh, and then and then it kind of shows after the recap of what the city's been going through for the past four years, and people have just been going crazy, and every killing is blamed on Michael Myers and and the stress that the community went through over all this time, and. So this kid's getting some of that too because people want to call him the new Michael Myers or you know anybody that kills anyone. Yeah. And I was just like, uh. Hey, and after that, uh, ain't it crazy though? In four years, even though Michael is still on the loose, Lori Strode has turned into basically a fucking housewife. Yes. That was the other thing. But I'm from, not run. But from. The 78 movie till 2018. She, she was, was a, a fucking survivalist. Yeah. Hardcore survivalist. And he's still out there, and then all of a sudden she's just like... I'm not I'm running gonna, from fear anymore. I'm gonna bake a pie. Yeah, I'm gonna... I'm not running from fear anymore. Yeah, I'm gonna rip my life. And the love. sheriff from the, the... I guess the other ones um, is the love interest now. He's, a, he's like... Yeah. So, so confusing. Well... And when she threw the can to him and, like, he missed it and it fell into the cart, like, you could just tell, like, it fucked it up. She threw it really hard. I didn't understand that. You need to eat some vegetables. I'm just like, God, this is stupid. I wonder why uh, Jamie Lee Curtis would want to be a part of this. Like, I don't know. uh, And not even, you know, just disregarding the other movies she was in. Well, because it's... Well, look at H2O. Well, that's a part of the original. Well, Why? when it skipped, it was 1, 2, H2O. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so she's willing to fuck up the whole timeline from the other movies. She's you know, and go back to the first one. I didn't... I don't know why they had to reference the... Or have another bus crash scene. Because the first one had a bus crash scene. So why do that again? It's just like Michael's not good on buses, I guess, huh? Yeah, you should definitely start transporting. But the Maybe she can't air him. The movie, like after the breakdown, the guy is riding a bicycle. Yeah. You know, and uh What's his name? Uh What do you mean what's his name? The main character. Besides Michael. Corey? Corey. Corey uh um, Corey out of nowhere. Who the fuck is Corey? Just a new character they made up. Yeah, and it's funny because the guy yells at him, you're late again. 
apparently, and he's like, come and talk to me. And then he gives him a motorcycle. And apparently, is this his motorcycle? No, this is this is the boyfriend of his mom. Oh. It comes to find out, it's pretty sure it's the boyfriend of his mom. That's the only thing I can I'm think of. It's, yeah. That's what it seems like to me. And his mom was weird. If he, he's a grown-ass dude. And she's kissing him on the lips. Because she's over-controlling. And that's yeah. why he's a little odd and off. Yeah. Is the way I think that they made that character. But the guy... Because I don't even want to reference this. The guy gives him this old motorcycle. It's like a 1980s Honda... Hurt by the kind of thing. Yeah, uh, if you see, if you know motorcycles, you know this motorcycle. I don't know motorcycles, but uh, and he's like, well, you just got to get it registered and tags. I mean, it sort of runs good. It, it it it's okay. Tori's the mechanic, so he can fix it. Yeah, all you seem to do is weld and exhaust, though. He's the mechanic. He's the I guess so. They work in a fucking junkyard. That's what I don't understand either. You're bringing your cars to get fixed in a junkyard. Like a scrapyard. This is a scrapyard. Like, who has a mechanics office in a scrapyard? I mean, I guess you got to have pull apart. You could get parts off cars, I guess. Yeah. They probably get, like, shitty cars and take some of the other parts yeah. off. I mean, and maybe that's it. I, I'm looking too far into it. I just... but And then, uh, Tori goes in, to the store on his bicycle. And he's looking, and this is what I don't... I just don't get... Like, I guess it's just showing, like, people treating him like shit everywhere he goes. Because the, the... Like, you're in a fucking gas station. And the, are you going to buy something? What? You weren't even in there that long. No. Would you not just be like, yeah, I will after I fucking pick it out. <laughs> but, <laughs> I guess it's just like, like pick that kinda, I think that's like a callback to the don't be a menace when he's in there and say, like, grab and buy yeah, I don't know, maybe. You remember that movie? Yes. Yeah, and then they open the cooler, and she's in the cooler. Hurry up and buy it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but so he buys him a chocolate milk, gets out, and uh, some high school kids. And this this right here, hold on. And they're band geeks. No, not all of them. Like the one kid. They're in, all of them are in the marching band. Oh, I took it as the one kid that had the letter jacket was like a jock. No, that's a marching band jacket. Yeah, it is. I, I noticed that. They're all in the marching band. These fucking marching band so that, that, are so, bullies. So the one dude, that was a drummer stick. Yeah. Because I was like, why does he have a letterman's jacket? Because I think the marching band gets them too. Yeah, but that kid don't look like a marching band kid. Oh, he, you, you know what I'm saying? The he way he looked like, he looked, he looked like more like... Some sort of football player, but that makes more sense now because the one girl looks super odd in the whole group. Yeah, like super odd. And he's like, "Will you buy some beer?" And these marching band geeks, are, or like, not uh, geeks, sorry, but these marching band kids have fake IDs, like they're the cool kids now. Yeah, like they're trying to make marching band kids the cool kids. That's something totally different than any movie. You know? Oh yeah, that's out of the box. That's thinking outside the box. Margin Man kids can be bullies too. And uh, he just, like, he has his chocolate milk and he's like, no, I'm not going to buy it for you. Let's see what, yeah, because he's got the overalls on. Okay. Now oh, I see. I, I didn't recognize. I thought they were, like, trying to do different kids. Yeah, they're all in the marching band. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm breaking this down too slowly. Um, So. He get the kids fuck with him. He breaks the glass. He falls on the, the hand. He gets pushed down, and his hand falls into the glass. He must not have no pain issues because he like when Jamie or when Lori walks up to him, he's just over scratch, just pulling the glass out. I'm like, God, I'd be freaking out trying to pull it out. Yeah, and <gasps> she's like, and she pulls out a knife. Do you want to do it or do you want me? I just saw. Uh, she's referencing. Oh, so now she's getting bad it. And so. He pops the tire sidewall. Oh, I was thinking when I first saw it, I was like, she's going to try to stab it? Well, yeah, that was the whole Oh, that was the whole thing uh, to make you think that. And she takes him to the doctor's office where her granddaughter works to get him connected. And her granddaughter sees him and the first thing she's up. She's in love. She's smitten. Yeah. Over. 
And I was just like, it's just, that's look, Johnny, that's love at first sight. Yeah. And he just goes on and and he's like, I got a motorcycle. You can have the bicycle. You know, and, and they crushed his glasses. No, no, no. That was later on. Uh, but uh, she she has her muffler. Like, she's got a boyfriend that used to be a cop. You know, and she was just in high school. And her boyfriend looks like he's in his mid to late 30s. It's only been four years. So she's in her early 20s. And that was a little weird. I don't know why. It's just a little odd. Like, I know it's okay for someone in their mid to late 30s to date someone in their early 20s. Yeah. But it's just, it, it, I don't know. It's just weird. But I guess they had to, you know, so that that cop could eventually. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I understand the storyline. It's just, and he he must have been in the previous movie. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was. So the second one. It's just odd that they dated. Yeah. Like, why were they even like? I don't know. Thankfully, in this one, they didn't reference evil dying tonight. Thank God. But uh, well, because Lori is living her life in her fucking nice home that somehow, I guess the land, the house that got burnt down, she must have got the insurance money and bought her a extremely nice fucking home in the middle of town. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's just. But can, is this enough to go into uh, Lori at the grocery store? Yeah, we we discussed that word. Oh she, no, I'm just talking about when she come out of the grocery store. Oh yes, the woman from the second one that got cut her throat cut. She lived. Yes, yeah, she lived. I thought that was cool. And her sister's like, "Oh, you just laughing it up, having a good time. You provoke that man." And I'm like, "How did she provoke you?" Did she? I guess because she he keeps coming after her. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I forget. I've watched this Halloween Kills recently, but I didn't watch Halloween Begins. And I wish I'd watch that one just to. Years is just Halloween. Oh well, it be. I thought it was Halloween. It sounds like Halloween Begins to me. It's technically the second one. Halloween two point so one. one. Whatever. We watched four. Yeah. Um. Halloween two point one, and then. Yeah, I thought I don't know. I just keep calling it Halloween Begins because that's what it should be. Yeah. I mean, like, well, yeah, I guess no, it's not. Halloween restarted. Yeah, <laughs> Halloween <laughs> rebooted. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah. So she comes out there. The girl goes to where? Oh, what was his name? Corey works, and she gets out of the car. And the first thing he does, he's riding around on his dirt bike, showing that he fixed it. A day later, with on. fucking sutures in his hand, he he fixed this motorcycle. Which not saying you can't. He he jumps off. He's like, get on. Yeah. Like, and, and, and the weird part to me is like all this. They make it like they've had a relationship. Yeah, and they've only been talking for a couple of days. If that. Yeah, maybe a day. Yeah, because the car got brought in because the kid. Was driving around on a flat tire for two blocks. So I'm just like, oh, what? What day is this? Oh yeah, because his dad is a douchebag, and it shows why he's a douchebag. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know. It... Unless they just it took them a day to get it towed. Yeah, I guess. And I just. Ah, this movie does not make sense at all. Because eventually the kids, uh, they she takes him to a costume party, messes him. The mom gets really irate. She's like, he's messaging you. No boy should be texting at the table. Blah blah blah. Uh, uh, uh what was it? Uh, good boys. Only good boys get custard after. Super weird. Yeah, like super weird. And the the boss is there that gave him the motorcycle. Don't tell him about the motorcycle. And he goes to this costume party, and they're all dancing and having a good time. And he wears this vacuum form uh, scarecrow, scarecrow mask. mask. Yeah. The only thing I could think of, like it's a, kind of a throwback to the vacuum form uh, clown mask from 1978. Yeah, uh, it's the way I took it. 
It's a little reference because he was a scarecrow. She was a cat. Um, but he takes his like overshirt because it's hot and his mask off, and he's laying on the floor dancing. Yeah. And I thought that was a little weird, just odd. And then of course the mother of the child that died is there, that he kicked off of the top of the balcony or banister over the banister, is there, and she rails him, you know, grills him about, you know, so nowhere he goes, it does not matter where he goes, he's always reminded of what happened. Yeah. People are always treating him like shit. So then he goes, runs out, and a girl tries to talk to him, and Allison tries to talk to him, and he's like, where are you going, don't go, you know, da da da, and he's like, I'm leaving, and you can't heal me, Just you're just going to get hurt, you can't fix me, I'm not someone you can fix, and I'm just like, when did all this fixing stuff come up? Because she's like, I've I, I seen you in the paper, I, I just feel like we're connected, I always wanted to get to know you, but all this fixing stuff, I, when did she ever say I wanted to fix you? I guess that's just what he thinks. Yeah, I guess. And then so he's walking down the road, and the band geeks or the band bullies, the band bullies, yeah, find him and pick on him and push him down. And this is a grown ass fucking man. Yeah, he tries to fight back. Yeah, and then he end up getting pushed off a fucking. Yeah, they step on his glasses, and he pushes him off on the bridge, and and um, Michael. He just starts getting dragged. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. He gets dragged into the uh, the sewer or whatever. You see that in the trailer, in a trailer. Yeah. But uh, in the tra- in the sewer, though, I guess he picks him up and he's looking into his eyes. Yeah, but well, he leaves him there to wake up. Yeah. You know, and he gets up and he's like looking around and he sees the hole to get out. And then he goes to the crack and Michael grabs him by the throat. And he looks into his eyes and all the flashback of the trauma that this boy's went through is shown to him. And I guess he could see the evil within him. Yes. So and he lets him go. He lets him go and then the other guy, the homeless guy that's been around is like, oh, you need to go back in there and get my mask. I'm Michael Myers and pulls a knife out and then the guy, the boy, Corey, ends up killing him. Yeah. And then he goes back to the girl. I'm sorry I ran away. I shouldn't have. And then they, they bone, right? Yeah. It shows Eventually, him yeah. And then he takes him back. It's like, I killed a person. Or something. I, and that, they run into the cop, the ex-boyfriend, and then he goes off. Whatever. Yeah, and he, he, he's like, he don't notice him there. And... And then he goes off on him, the guy Corey does, and then they he drops her off, and then Corey follows him back to the sewer area. No, that guy follows Corey to the sewer. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's when he finds the homeless guy dead in the tent. And you're a fucking cop, right? You're a cop. You know all the stuff that's gone on in this town. Yeah. Are you going to crawl through a sewer pipe or a drain pipe? After you find a dead body, roll out of a tent. Without backup? Yeah, you're not going to call it in. No, not at all. I mean, and I understand it's a movie and you got to move forward. Like, you got to make him like he's dumb, I guess. He's not thinking rationally, maybe. Maybe he's drunk. Maybe. He's less drinking, right? Yeah, but they're at a diner. Sure. I mean, maybe alcohol served in Indiana, Illinois. Illinois, yeah. In yeah. Illinois diners, I don't know. So he gets in there and don't even attack him? Yeah, and uh, he disappears, and then next thing you know, he pretty much hits him in the head with the flashlight and lets Michael kill him. Yeah, and then but Michael he was re- screaming at Michael to show me how you do it. Yes, so, and really, it's almost like Michael got rejuvenated from that kill. Yeah, because you noticed though he started he leaned up. And he's like, yeah, I was like, is he about to have a heart attack? I thought he was getting off. He just skeeted in his pants. Yeah. I, I kind of thought that it was like, hey, is he about to fucking die? So is this like a passing with a torch type thing? That's what I figured. Uh, and th- let's just be clear. I guess Michael Myers doesn't need to eat. 
She right. might have been eating rats or something down there. Maybe. They do show a lot of rats. And There's then he got plenty of water. Because then he goes back to old girls, like after he led the, led her. Remember, yeah. after he killed that dude gets killed, he goes back to old girl. Then they go back to the old house where he killed the person, right? Or do they? Yeah, I don't know. I, I might be mixing yeah, that up. Yeah, because she looked that might happen before at the top of the banister. That might happen before even they even went to the well, diner. something like that. But it was weird. It's like why did he go to the top and she stayed at the bottom? But she's looking up at him. Yeah, they they did the you know the little dramatic shot of oh love, teen witch type thing. Yeah, like just. It, you remember that movie? Yes. <laughs> yes, I remember teen witch. I was in love with her. Was it her name's Robin? Isn't it? I have no clue. No, I, didn't. I think it might be Robin. Uh, I'm that getting is, lost. Uh, that is Ryan Reynolds' wife's sister. I don't know she what you're talking about. Um, the redhead? Yeah, that's Ryan Reynolds' wife. Ryan Reynolds, who's his wife? Blake uh, Lively? Yeah, that's that's her name. Robin Lively, I think her name. Oh, hmm. I didn't know that. Uh, so I'm probably missing things. Yeah, Robin Lively. I wish he... Uh, anyways. So... Okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, so... Obviously, the they others. they move like then Jamie Lee Curtis's character like Lori's kind of noticed that he's changed. He's not the same, you know. And she, what did she say something about? She told somebody she saw Michael's eyes and his eyes or something. Yeah. Like that. Yes. And then they go talk to the dad eventually that of the kid that's been killed, and he's like, I "See him walking down the road," and I was going to just tell him, you know, I'm sorry for how everyone's treating you. It's not right. But when he looked at him, he's like, that wasn't the same kid that mowed my yard. Maybe that person's always been there. I don't know. Michael has brought it up. But hell, is this about the part where about the time he goes back and he like, Michael getting a fight and he still yes. has a mask? Well, I think before that he wore his own mask, the scarecrow mask, to go murder the boss and the... Oh, the doctor? Yeah, I don't understand that. Um, because the girl got promoted over her. But he ended up pulling Michael out, and Michael killed the girl. Because he killed the doctor, and Michael come in, he, he stabbed her through the... Yes. She was dangling in the wall. Yeah, that's right. Super duper. Yeah. Much on. And then they go on another bike ride, and they go to the radio station where he always wanted to climb it, and they're on top of the radio station. Right. Huh. And then the disc jockey comes out, and he's like, Talking about how he's a loser and talked bad about her, and then super, yeah, super dick. He goes, "Why don't y'all get off my property before I fuck y'all up?" And uh, then that's when he goes steals the mask from Michael. Yeah, he's in, you got something I need, and then he goes and kills the disc jockey. Yeah, and then he goes to Lori's house. But you know, do you notice who he killed before the disc jockey? Darcy the male girl. Oh, was that? Yeah, it was uh, Diana Pierce. I didn't uh, know that. Prince. I didn't know that. I think that was the secretary. Yeah. The, yeah. She made a little cameo. That's cool. And so it gets to Lori's house. And because Lori had, he had told her, he, had, he, he was asleep on the floor somewhere. And Lori had told her, told him, I'll kill you before you can be with my granddaughter. You need to leave her alone. I mean, it wasn't even her there. Do what? It wasn't even her there in the house. He was hearing that she was sitting at the chair behind him because he was asleep on the floor where the kid died. Yeah. And then after she said all this and he's going back and forth with her, it shows him that it goes back and she's not even in the house no more. Did so it was like he was just imagining it. Or some shit. I don't know. Oh, yeah. It, and he went to the mom's She went to the mom's house. It's just super weird, man, because cause then the, the granddaughter's like, let's run away together, let's burn this place down, um, and she's like super in love in three days. Like, I mean, willing to run away with did something in three days. Uh, did he set it on fire? I don't know. He set the 
the uh, place, the radio station on fire. Oh, yeah, okay. So was it after that he went to... Uh, he went to Glory's. Okay. He and, went to the house for the radio station, right? He slept in the floor of the radio station, or the, the house, too. I the think... Uh, That's when he had the conversation with Lori. Where, uh, where does the hat go to after that? I don't know. Because Lori gets into argument with her granddaughter about yeah. how she needs to stop seeing him. She's like, but you brought us together. It's been three days. <laughs> like, rip, yeah. three or four days max. Like, I don't even think it's been a whole week. This is why it's so confusing to me. Because it don't seem like it has. You know? And then Lori's in her house, and she's got her bourbon and her drink, and she's going to finish her book, but she knows that someone's there. She calls in a suicide. You know? And she has her okay. gun. But she acts like she's going to kill herself. And she yeah, because this is like the end of it. Yeah, and she shoots the pumpkin, which you can tell is a pumpkin when it hits the wall. And he opens the door. He's like, you think I'd kill myself? Shoots him twice in the shoulder. He falls over the banister. She goes down there and just shoots the gun into the wall. After taking his mask off, seeing who it was. And he has a knife and he's like, I told you, if I couldn't have her, no one could. Yeah. So he's then that, that's this is what don't make sense to me. So he stabs himself in the neck. <laughs> I, I, I thought it was like you know usually when they say that they kill the person. Yeah. So he stabs himself in the neck and then then he then the granddaughter pulls up, Allison pulls up and comes in the house and instead of leaving the knife in his neck, Lori pulls it out. And standing there over him with the knife. And the mask is on the floor. Michael Myers' mask is on the floor. And she comes in. What did you do? And the mask is on the floor. Yeah. You, I, you're in such a hysterical thing that you think that your grandmother, because she was a survivalist or, you know, whatever, killed the boy that you love. But why is the boy that you love... In her house, dressed as Michael Meyer. Yeah. Does any of that make sense? Okay, and then after that... Uh, She's on the road. But then that's when Michael Myers gets... Uh, Comes in. Yeah, and he gets the mask back, and he puts it back on. Yeah, and he breaks dude's neck, but she's on the road, right? Yeah. So she's driving down the road, and she gets a phone call from... We got a suicide call from your grandmother, her house. Haddonfield's not that big, right? So, if you get a suicide call, wouldn't the cops be there quicker than... Yeah, you think. But so they fight, and... uh, She uh, takes a knife and then stabs it through his hand, and then... Yeah. ...into the table, and that's pinned that one down. And then she does the other one, then gets a fucking pan, a fucking hammer. Yes. And uh, then she slices his throat. Yeah, and takes the mask off, slices his throat. Still don't show like a good video or a good shot of him. Well, hold on. He rips his hand out. Oh yeah. Dude. And 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 so he's got split down the middle of his hand, and he still grabs her, and he's choking her, and she's about to die. She's like, "Do it, do it." And the granddaughter comes in and says, "No." And then he pulls his hand back, and you see that big ass. Yeah. Him. And hits him, and then she, cause that, and that's all after she sliced his wrist too. Yeah, that, and like, then he's like fading, and she's fading, and she, the granddaughter comes in, and that it didn't she even slice his throat? Slice his throat first, and then it, yeah, so made him bleed out. Yeah, and stabbed him in the side. Yeah. Hell, stabbed him in the chest. Like I mean, that motherfucker. And uh, they tie him to the roof of the car. And they uh, and they like we normally don't do this, but yeah, Haddonfield needs to heal. Yeah, the the original cop from the second one, the, uh, the was he the FBI? Uh, I don't know. But uh, he but they drive through town and ever then they get to uh, I guess the the, the uh, junkyard and they turn on the big grinder. Yes, and the and a bunch of the what is it the uh, townspeople carry him to it and set him in there and then Lori gets out and kicks him in, kicks him in, and, and that's a good special effects. Yeah, and it grinds him up. 
Yeah, it grinds him up so there's no more Michael. Michael is dead. It's over. Uh, I thought that it ended well. I liked how it ended. Yeah. As far as, like, the fight between her and just, you know, and then the the grinding. And I, it, I probably, like, the way that we broke it down may not, it's probably scattered and don't make sense. Uh, <laughs> movie don't make sense, so. Th- exactly. Like, they, she was going to run away with this guy in three days because they trauma bonded, I guess. She felt like she had a trauma bond with him. And technically, technically, Corey might have had his neck broke, but you don't know that for a fact. Like there can be a fourth? No. Uh, that's just what it was. Like there was one where Corey lived. Yeah. An ending, an alternate ending. Maybe that'll be in the, the DVD or Blu-ray, or maybe that was just written yeah. where he lived. So if somebody wanted to carry the Corey character on, oh, like a spinoff. Yeah, you could do that. He's a new Michael, but from what uh, Jim Jam was telling me, he talked to someone and made a good point that if it was just not Michael at all, and the character of Corey was the kill was a killer, it could be a standalone movie. It could have been a standalone movie because it that would have been pretty decent. He falls in love with a girl, but he can't get over the. The, the the bullying that he ever had and the trauma that he's gone through from these last four years because it could have just been a four year period. It could almost easily be cut up to not even reference. And if there was no Michael and the grandmother didn't want him to be together, but yet he's a killer. You know what's and cool. it right. just you know what's funny though, this is the third movie. Halloween season of the witch was the third movie. What does that mean? Well, Guess you can tie it into like you could almost make it where you don't even have to have Michael in it. You take yeah. Michael out of the equation and have a because season of the witch right there. If they didn't call it Halloween, it would have been a good standalone movie. But they wanted to try to franchise it out. But if you if you if you put that in and don't think of it as a Halloween movie, it's a good movie. Yeah. So Halloween ends. I'm glad it's over. Uh, it kind of made me. It kind of makes me have a negative outlook on uh, the Halloween franchise. Yeah, it kind of sucks. Because Halloween, that. the first one, you know, the reboot. Pumped in, in the first one. Like, like when that I, was when, good. When I watched it in theaters and that first scene come on, that the, the opening scene of the pumpkin, dude, I was like getting goosebumps. And, and it, this one just didn't do that at all. Because it kept falling. Like, Halloween kills. Like, watching it a second time... I guess it wasn't as bad as I remembered it the first time, but just that annoying ass. It's just evil not dust. the best movie, but the first one, and it's just like man. Maybe they should have just done it. With just y'all had a trilogy in mind, and this is how y'all. I don't know. You had you had two years to do it right because the pandemic. Well, but you got to think though they they wrote these movies. They probably already had the. They already probably knew where they were going. They can rewrite. Yeah, but. They had fucking. They didn't. Then they didn't have to put it out when they did. They could have stretched it out a little further and done it better. But oh well. Yeah, and it's getting bad reviews. And even on Rotten Tomatoes, it only has like a fifty for the audience, like fifty something for audience and forty for the uh, for uh, critics. So it's kind of like you kind of got to go with it. Like you kind of got to believe them. It's not the best movie. Uh, yeah, fifty-seven audience score, forty tomato meter. Yeah, that's that's about right. I mean, let's see what. Uh, I mean, it's worth watching just to end it. Halloween Kills got, but I I just I don't. Know. I went. I'm glad I kind of. I'm kind of glad I didn't go to theater to watch it. Cause so I, the first 2018 one got a 79 from tomato. critics and 71 from audience. And then Halloween Kills got a. Ooh. Wow. 39 to made it, but 66 from the audience. Yeah. And that's what I usually go with because they got a 40 on this one from the critics and a 57 from the audience. Uh, which it could go up. I mean, it's only the first weekend, but I. Yeah. I kind of agree with them. So it looks like a tomato meter. The second was the shittiest scored by their 
So the third one they like. They, no, the, no, the second one on the uh, critics was thirty nine, right? Yeah, so it yeah. was a shit is. Yeah. yeah. Then the other but one. The, but you gotta think, this is just the first weekend. It could go down. Oh, that's true. Like, uh, I, I'm glad how it ended because it just erased all thoughts on this franchise continuing from these people. Yeah. From this group. Someone else will, a couple years from now, will probably try to reboot. Would you reboot this? What would? Okay, Johnny. What would you? What's your favorite remake now? Reboot, remake. Do you Rob Zombie or this this trilogy? I vaguely remember the Rob Zombie ones because I only watched them once, and that was in mid two thousands. Yeah. So, uh, I hope. Um, I always call the Rob Zombie remake uh, the uh, White Trash Mama's Boy. Yes. Of course, you know who played uh, the mom of Michael Myers, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Sherry Moon. Sherry Moon Zombie. Of course. But, are you looking something up? Uh, I was just looking at... Uh, I, I mean, me personally... Would, yeah. would Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, be considered a reboot? That's a good question. Because after the third one in 1982, there was no movie for six years. Hmm. Oh, after two? Yeah, see? So two and three were... So two, 81, or after three, 1982. So, hell, seven years it took for them to re-come out with another Michael Myers for the return of him. So they didn't know where to go after... Season of the Witch. Sorry. Hmm. But, yeah. All right, um, well. So I'm going to go with 4 and 5 as my favorite reboot. Okay. 4 and 5 is my favorite reboot of the series. What is yours? Just because Daniel Harris. Was All right, well, um, well, you know, Daniel Harris was in the Rob Zombie remake, and yep. she was butt yeah. naked. Yeah, I know. That's... Blood well, never mind. Though. I prefer that. What? That one. Just because she's butt naked in it. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, there's going to be no short film this week because this is long enough. Yes. So uh, We overextended our dime this week. But, yeah, go ahead and uh, check it out because it's on Peacock. If you got Peacock, why not? No, I, I say uh, definitely go watch it just for the whole fact to end it. Oh, yeah, yeah, because if you watch the first two, then I mean, that's... you got to finish it off. Yes. But, Johnny, that's all we got. We out. Peace! Now it's time to say goodbye to the basement guys again. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heap and helping of their hospitality. Or that is, spooks and spells. Take your shirt off. Y'all come back now, here, 